Previously, the world's number one personal branding coach, Loy Macedo, has dunked on Adam and Eve, Noah's Ark, and even Jesus, claiming he never existed. But now he's just angry at Christians in general, and specifically the Catholic Church. Here we go. When you go to the church, the priest raises the Eucharist, the bread, and the wine. And there are claims that this became the flesh of Jesus, this became the blood of Jesus. So now this blood, this Eucharist, does it actually become the flesh, flesh and blood? But if it is real, then are we cannibals? Are we eating someone's flesh and blood? I'm a Protestant, so I don't believe in the Eucharist. You're gonna have to ask the Catholics on that one. But personally, I don't believe in the transubstantiation. I do think it seems cannibalistic. And the same guy listens to your sins. This guy forgives you. So the priest can heal your sins through Jesus? Here's my question, how do you know? I believe. Huh? I believe. Another question for Catholics. Personally, I don't think that anybody can forgive sins except Jesus. No one can step in his place. We can pray for one another and we can help one another through our sins, but the only one that can really forgive them is God. If Jesus died so that our sins were forgiven, past, present, and future, why would we still need to get forgiven by a priest? I just don't think we do. Now, here's another question. The body and blood of Christ heals you. So there are miracles where Jesus and Mary has healed people. Why are they healing people only in convention centers and special locations? Why can't Jesus heal people around? Good question. I don't know a whole bunch about faith healers. It's not a huge thing where I live. I've never experienced it all that much growing up, but I think a lot of them are fakes. I think it's entirely possible that someone can have a supernatural healing ability. I've heard stories of it before, but I haven't seen evidence of it for myself yet. And as for the people in convention centers doing it in front of giant crowds, well, I think a lot of them are just doing it for the money. But that doesn't have to really do with the truth of Christianity. Hypocrisy doesn't negate the truth of a religion. I asked you a simple question. This God who knows everything, is all-knowing, who's everywhere, who can do anything, why does he allow rape of children? Answer me. Why does he allow hunger? Why does he allow famine? Why does he allow cancer in small, innocent people? The problem of evil is the strongest objection to Christianity, so we finally come to that. I've done videos on it before, but here's a short summary. Pain, evil, and suffering are all temporary things that are a part of this world. Sometimes evil things happen to us because we make evil choices, like a murderer getting caught and tortured by a vigilante. The torture is evil, but so was the murder. But sometimes bad things are just afflictions. They aren't our fault. A child isn't responsible for the cancer he has. It wasn't his fault. Maybe he was born with it. Sicknesses aren't usually our fault, but they are an effect of sin being a part of this world. And still, all of that is temporary and will go away one day. God's plan involves this world and the next one. The next one is literally infinitely longer than this one and is rid of all evil. So the evil things we experience are nothing compared to the grace and joy of heaven, no matter how bad they are. Anyway, these are the questions that I have for our Christian people. You have to be baptized. You have to believe in Jesus to be saved. You don't have to be baptized to be saved. You do it as a profession of your faith and sometimes to join a congregation, but it's not a salvation issue. Loy, if you're listening, please don't be like Richard Dawkins who says, Even if there was this, this booming voice and the second coming in clouds of glory, the more probable explanation is that it's a hallucination or a <laughs> conjuring trick by David Copperfield or something. What would, what would persuade you? Well, I'm starting to think nothing would. The Bible says, If they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. If you don't believe Moses and the Ten Commandments or any of the Old Testament prophets, you wouldn't even believe it if someone rose from the dead in front of you. Belief and evidence aren't opposites. They go together. I know that you've been scarred by a lot of religious hypocrisy, as have many people, and I'm sorry about that. But God says that all pain is temporary and that heaven is much better. That's all I got. I hope it helps, and I'll see you next time.